Cold summers I hit the block That's just a block to fuck it crazy They all been my fucking life Hit the kitchen up Damn, that broke the fork off in the white Gotta get this money so my kids can get what the fuck they like So I took my kids to the store and told them Get what the fuck they like Right now, Mr. Rump Shaker How you doing, sir? Interesting story, man. <laughs> but before I even get into that, you know, <laughs> rump shaker, that implies dancing. Yes. Is that yes. what you do, sir? Yes, that's what I do. I mean, I have a regular job, too, but... Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm not mad at you, yeah. brother. Matter of fact, I might be a little envious of you. <laughs> now, why, why did you... <laughs> no, man. <laughs> yeah, rock with me, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, 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 Bobby, why did you go into that line of work right there? Well, I used to be a aerobics instructor, um, real popular in um, health clubs back in um, back in the day. Right. And the dancers used to come and work out in the gym. Um, hot chocolate. You know, okay, yeah, Seeker, yeah. some of those fellas. Right. And um, they used to try to take the attention from me, come in my aerobics class, interrupting my class. You know Why? Because it was full of ladies? Yeah, in full class. of ladies. All the ladies <laughs> there to see Robert. But, you know, they, <laughs> right. you know, so walking past them, and they, you know, felt a little, you know, you know, jacked up about it. So they want to come in my aerobics class trying to take the attention from me. But <laughs> they got to know that, it, you know, I'm, I was the star in the making, but right. they had to bring it out. You know right. what I'm saying? So right. if they would have kept their bus in there lifting weights, <laughs> right. it wouldn't be no rum shaker. So when they came in there, it was like certain moves I would do that they couldn't do. You know, because I'm real flexible and everything. So right. then I would look make them look uncomfortable in my class, so they got to leave up out of there. Right, you know right. Saying? And so it went from there, and I won a uh, rum shaker dance contest when the song came out back right. at the... Um, with, uh, uh, hold on, with my guys from Virginia. What yeah, Teddy Riley. Yeah, Teddy Riley and them. Teddy Riley yeah, and them right? yeah. yeah. It was the old um, Toucan Harry's out in Warrensville up on Emory Road there, up in the plaza. They right. had a contest with the radio station, and it was the Rump Shaker song, so I won Did the contest. Did the women contest. in your class ever, like, encourage you to take up, you know, to take yeah, every that contest? Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I wasn't in thinking about the dancing thing all like that, and then um, I won the contest, and then I got laid off from my construction job. And I was um, looking at Jerry Springer, and he, he just that episode just happened to have some male dancers on it, right? right. And I'm laying there half sleep looking, and all of a sudden they had guys from Chicago, Detroit, Philly, Cincinnati, and Chicago. Right. So um, and the Cleveland guys, and so when the Cleveland guys came up, I was like, "What the hell? That's the brothers to be at the damn at the gym." Right. And I'm like, "These brothers on TV." Right. Right. And they like, I got mad. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. They on TV making this money. I'm going to make me some money. Right. So, um, you know, lo and behold, a few years later, HBO came to Cleveland, did a documentary on me. So I did a little bit better than they Jerry Springer. Wow. So, Hold yeah. on. This the first time I heard somebody ever got inspiration from watching <laughs> Jerry Springer. You got to be a honey just to live my motherfucking life. I be smoking loud. Man, I swear I can smoke an ounce a night. I be popping pills and I be putting lean off in the spray. Posted at the corner store Made them cars be coming You would swore it was a stop and go That's when I'm going to switch up blinds I don't fuck with them out the and then um, I got invited to one of their big shows at Veils on the Circle back in the day when they had Veils on the Circle. Right. And um, when I pulled up, I saw a line. It was like 2,500 ladies lined up, wrapped around the building. I was like, they getting it like this? Right. And I started adding that money up. You know, $25 for VIP, $15. And I'm, I'm telling 2,500 ladies. Right. You know what I'm saying? Times 25. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. the cha-ching. They start going. You know right. what I'm saying? So I'm standing there at the top of the veils looking down you know how the stage went you know you look down yeah, at yeah. the stage so i'm standing there and all you know for that hour or so i'm trying to watch to see what these guys are doing you know get my routine together right but the whole time i'm like okay you know i'm moving i'm like thank you know what I mean? <laughs> right. so women putting money on me and i'm fully <laughs> dressed like i am now i'm just standing there they squeezing my butt everything feeling all on but you know i'm i'm trying to get focused on how i'm gonna get this money you know what i'm right. saying Hold on, so, I, you yeah. focus on how you gonna get the yeah. money, and they putting the oh, money they, they, on you. They, they put it all on me, so I get home that night, you know. So I'm, my mind's still going for about my routine and how I'm gonna open up and how I'm gonna be different from everybody I saw. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I want to be, uh, you, you know, unique. Right. And so, man, I took all that money out of my pocket. I had about 175 dollars already, and didn't take off nothing. I, 
I might you see what I'm saying? Be dabble in that line of work. <laughs> I didn't What's take off thing? one thing. Let me ask you a question because it's got to be more to it than, you know, well, you had the dancing going for you. Yeah. You know, it's more to it than having the physique. You know, yeah. what? What? what's the mindset got to be like in order to attract the women and attract the money? What's your mindset have to be like? Well, you, you got to have a strong mindset. and You can't uh, worry about what people think. And that's the whole basis of behind what I'm doing now because all these years I've been you know somewhat ridiculed by certain church folks and certain people about me being a stripper right you know and all the drama that's on in the streets but I've learned over the years in my experiences it's more drama in the church than it is on the streets and these people know this stuff and they want to hide it and pass it along so one person doing some some drama, got some drama going on, sexing all these ladies in the church. So what the pastors do is slide them over to another church, just put them out of this church. But nobody puts puts them on blast. Right now, take take us to the story you got, cause you got a real interesting story yeah. about a preacher, and you we all know the stereotypes of a preacher: get money, mess with all the women in the church. Well, he's been involved in a real life situation like that. Am I yeah. right? Tell, yes. us, tell us about it. Well, um, majority of the story can be found um, on YouTube at Rump Shaker. Just go to search in and put in Rump Shaker. I got two videos, and you'll be able to see the whole overall picture. Right. And then you can go to my Facebook, which is Bobby Mercer, and I explain a lot of stuff on there too. Right. Okay, because um, some legal stuff going on right now, so I really can't say a whole lot. But you can go to those, and you'll be able to see the whole thing. Right. But um, basically, um, a young lady who um, I met some years ago, and um, we ended up becoming real cool and uh, almost like family. She ended up being like my little sister after it was over, said, and done, along with her two daughters being like my, my but stepdaughters. But you was intimate at one point. Yeah, right? one time, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, a while ago, yeah. Right. So um, basically she had a son who, um, who got um, injured in Germany when she was stationed in the um, Army over there. He ended up becoming um, brain dead and, um, mm. you know, a vegetable. So um, there was a lawsuit in against the state of Iowa who provided the care for him when he got hurt. So um, when um, she moved back to the States, he became, um, you know, the, the Army took care of his medical care and everything. Right. And so um, I met her about a year or so, about two years after she had moved to the States. So he had 24-hour nursing care. When you come to the house, you look off to the side. He had his own bedroom like a hospital room, monitors, everything. And, I mean, boy couldn't talk, couldn't do nothing. Right, so I'm like, wow, this is deep right here. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So um, I know this woman's thinking, you know, before she ran into this minister. You know what I'm saying? And I know the mindset of her kids because I watched them grow up. Right. So for the son had to get surgery at the Cleveland Clinic. You know what I'm saying? A few years later, so he ended up dying on the operating table. They went to put rods in his back. Mm -hmm. I just left them and the family at the Cleveland Clinic and went to be with my kids out at Applebee's out in um, Bedford. And um, I'm sitting there, and I just left him about three hours, and then my phone rang. She's like, where are you at? They just killed my son. I'm like, what? My son just died on operating table, blah, blah, blah. So at, I, Clinton. at the Cleveland Clinic, yeah. So I left out, you know, took care of my kids and got down there. And, you know, I had to console her for a while. You know, right, you just right, lost sure. your child. And sure. even though he was, he was there, but he wasn't there, still, you know, a child. You know right, what I'm saying? Exactly. And I got three sons of my own and a daughter. So, you know. I felt that pain, you know, right. right there. I mean, I would be jacked up if anything, you know, happened to any of my kids. So right. to even see that, you know, and experience all that, then I helped bury the little man, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, right. gave money, you know what I'm saying, did different things. You and were real yeah, supportive. Yeah, real supportive and everything. And this dude was one of the ministers in the church that she attended. He was already being a player there because she used to always talk about how the ladies was tripping on him and everything. Right. So as time went on, um, you know, we buried them and everything. So I went my separate ways, and she, um, we maintained contact. Like I said, she was like my sister, you know, like my little sister. So um, she gave me, we had to um, get the medical records from the Cleveland Clinic. So I did all of that then um, because the Cleveland Clinic was playing stupid for a minute about the. Because it ended up going from. Yeah, it went. Oh, yeah, injury. yeah, yeah. yeah the, the lawsuit went from a personal injury to a wrongful death. Okay. And so then. Um, we had to get the medical records. Cleveland Clinic was playing games with the records, you know what I'm saying? Because you got two years to file. So um, we got our attorney um, downtown, um, and um, then he was playing games too. Because you, if you notice, nobody sues the Cleveland Clinic. As much death goes on in there, you don't see nothing in the paper. 
about Cleveland Clinic being sued or anything. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, everything is hush hush with them. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I ain't gonna go into details about, it, but it was a very foul situation with them. Right. Okay, so um, basically they got away with all that. Basically the boy bled to death on the table, and his blood they, they didn't have a blood or something to that extent. And then, but the sisters and her had the same blood type. You know what I'm saying? But right. he still bled out on the table. So explain that to me. Um, so I got the finally got the medical reports, and I took it to another friend of mine who do surgery in Pennsylvania. You know, by being rum shaker, I know a lot of people in right. all different fields. So right. I'm able to keep it moving, you right. know, behind closed doors. So I took the medical report to um, to this young lady. She went over it. After our attorney, the one we had so-called thought was on our side, told us that he took it to a doctor in Florida saying that um, he couldn't find nothing wrong that the Cleveland Clinic did. The doctor in Florida said that. Yeah, this is the doctor in Florida said the Cleveland Clinic ain't did nothing wrong. Right. You know they Must have been a cahoots. colleague of Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Crossgrove. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so we going back and forth with that. And I'm like, something still ain't right. So when I give it to my friend, you know, she, she going through it about – Two minutes in the reading, she's like, oh, yeah, right here. They knew something was going on in the surgery because you only administer this type of medicine right here when the heart is acting up. and all." You know what I'm saying? So she started breaking it down. She found like eight things within three minutes of the damn surgery. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So broke all that down. So we end up, um, then you know, she was all jacked up in the head, so she just didn't want to press the issue no more. Then she's dealing with her regular attorney that's in Iowa. Right. Who like, so were you like an inspiration to keep the case going? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm all of that and keeping her, you know, keeping her head right. You right. know what I'm saying? Because right. she had breakdowns and everything. You know, I had to talk right. her out a lot of stuff, and stuff just got crazy. Right. So it has got a period of time where, you know, I just had to let, you know, the tightness go after, you know, a year or so. I'm like, you know, I can't be around as much. I got, I'm doing my own thing, and this is just taking too much of my time. So, like I said, we remain friends. But, you know, I still took care of, you know, the girls are like my, my, my stepdaughters. Good. So, you know, I would go get them from school when, when the menstruals is acting up or something. She can't get to them. But, I mean, we maintain contact at least once or twice a week. Right. Anyway, you okay. know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> but I was at a Cleveland Browns game, and so I'm walking with my boy, and also I get hit in the back of the head. I'm like, what the hell? You know, I look, I see her running. She waving at me, right? Right. But dude, the minister, he about 30 feet in front of her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she's chasing him. And I'm like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? Right. So I knew about it, but I really wasn't, my, I don't care who, you know what I'm saying? So uh, my boy that's with me, he was like, damn, she with such and such? That brother foul. That's menace, you know, this and that. He messed over my girl. I got both videos, part one and two of the Horny Married Minister on um, YouTube. That's the name of it. It's the title of it. <laughs> Let me tell you about this minister. This minister is from Youngstown. Okay. Right, he commutes back and forth to Cleveland. He's been married to his wife since 1982. Okay, right. yeah, since 1982. So he commutes back and forth. Right? right, he works at a children family services place here in Cleveland, over in Shaker Heights. Okay, so he commutes back and forth all this time. But he do his ministry in a variety of churches that he's been, you know, put out of or told to leave from Youngstown to Cleveland. Right. You know. So if you listen to the video, I explain. And say names and everything in the videos of what churches and everything, nice. you know. And he currently at a, a church not far from here, over off of Woodland. So, um, so she ended up getting <laughs> yeah. one point four million put in her bank account. Okay, so she calling me. I ordered her a brand new Audi. She got an eighty thousand dollar eighty thousand dollar Audi A seven. But during the whole time, you know, you get those funny feelings. You know, her son has been talking through me. Right. You know, certain things that I know that. She only would know. So I would tell her. Like, I'm like, when you get that car, you need to rep your son for him not being here. So you need to put his name along with his date of where he was born in September. You know, his name plus that nine, you know what I'm saying, on the plate. Right. You know, since you're around here flossing, rep his name. He's gone. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if he was a baller or something, he would have made it. When If he was, still, you know, normal kid and everything, that's how he would have rolled. He would have had his name plus nine on the plate. How did you know that? <laughs> we always talked about that. How did you know that? I'm, I'm trying to tell you, little dude, be talking to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, so then she turns around, she gets the car, everything's cool. So I go out and, you know, end up um, doing some few things around her house for her because she um, had to do a couple things. So then um, the, her daughter, her older daughter, called me and, you know, she's going crazy because, dude, the minister is acting a fool around the house. And since you got that golf club, he liked to play golf, too. That's his main <laughs> thing. If you listen to the video, I talk about him and his golf stuff. 
So um, I got, you know, so I'm getting tired of this dude now. You know what I'm saying? The money's there. Then she turns around and buy him a $40,000 Volkswagen CC. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But this dude is married. He live in Youngstown with his wife since 82. Them, t- them three supposed to be, en- they've been engaged three times. You know, I'm supposed to get married through the whole process. I'm supposed to have been the best man in the weddings. You know what I'm saying? And I've been teasing her all these years. Brother, you ain't going to, sh- he's not marrying you. You know what I'm saying? So after the daughter's getting on my nerves, I go out to, all the way out to Youngstown to, to warn to the Trumbull County Courts, and I get his marriage certificate, his marriage license. I bring it to Cleveland, hand it to her on her porch. Right after she bought him the car. What did she say? Oh, man, where'd you get this from? How did you get this? I said, it's public record. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not hard. She didn't have no inclination at all. No, she, I mean, people been saying stuff, but, you know, she didn't have the hard evidence. I gave her the hard certified copy. It wasn't a copy. It was certified, right. stamped and everything. So, yeah. you, so now, listen, so you feel by exposing him because he wronged somebody that was really close to you. Of course. Your, your loved ones. Them girls, forget her. I mean, she's out there. She gone. I right. mean, I mean, I get to her less. She gone. I mean, he didn't blew her mind, put a demon in her, if, or whatever. If, if, if old girl was what? But, yeah, I'm if, just, if, I'm keeping it real. She's she's not the person that I you know I eventually met. You know what I'm saying? Right now, if if, if she yeah. was watching this, or if she has the opportunity to come back to watch this mm-hmm. right now, what would you want to say to her right now? You know, just you file. That's it. You know, I'm not even going to make this alone because this is not really my life. It's just a story I need to tell and move on with my life right now. You know what I'm saying? Because I put enough energy in this already. And, you know, it's not a negative thing. I feel good about everything I've done. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, a lot of you're not a lot of people, but her look, her and, and him, you know, they want to stay the way they are. Stay the way you are. But, dude, you file. People know about you now. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk. Now, nah, I can't. You'll see. Go the to the video. Go man. on the video. It's on the video. Go, go to yeah. Bobby Mercer on Facebook. Facebook. Yep. Or, and you can watch the videos and everything. Or YouTube, Rump Shaker. Put in there. Hey, thanks, Robert. I appreciate you, man. I got my man on back by popular demand right here. Loud Pack's own Young Mustard. Yeah. Turn up, bud. <laughs> huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah, God damn, okay. bitch. His daddy. His daddy. Oh, I like time for next bitch. You gonna make me pop trunk, man, and hit you with that damn thing. I'm still in this bitch, man. Holding it down. Yeah. yeah. I swear to God, swear to God, huh? Huh? I swear to God, swear to God, huh? Oh, I got goons behind me. I-L-T. Bitch, 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 just another crazy day off in my life. I got that money because everything come with a price. And like a gamble, so you know I'm finna roll the dice. I pop my truck and get to blaming for my fucking strikes. Blaming for my fucking strikes. Just another crazy day off in my life. Bitch, Everything come with a price And life's a gamble, so you know 